Hey everybody, it's your favorite friend and fiend, Kenneth Ramon, back here yet again in the Cruiser Bruiser. And I'm back with you this time with another awesome tacular movie review for you guys. Yes, there's been a few movies that I've been wanting to review. Go away, plane! Yes, there's been a few movies that I've been wanting to review for you guys for a while now. Just been trying to find time to do it. But uh, this movie was no exception. I had to review it and give my thoughts on it. Now, those of you guys that have been following my channel for a while know that I'm a big music buff and a big movie buff. So I feel like, uh, you know, these music biopics, they just go hand in hand for me. But um, this one was particularly extra special for me because I've been the biggest Weird Al fan forever, forever. I think it always goes back to when you're a 10 year old boy, right? But anyways, I always loved like, you know, the spoofs uh, and parodies of like popular songs on the radio. And I think it started with like Mad TV because I was always watching TV a lot. And I would watch Comedy Central and Mad TV and Chappelle Show even. They would do like little spoofs of like, you know, hit songs on the radio. And I would sing it all the time to annoy my friends in elementary school. And then I would even write my own, right? And then I had that one friend that said, well, dude, if you like all this stuff, I mean, you're going to love Weird Al. And I'm like, who's Weird Al, right? And then, uh, so like he introduced me to, I think he said, uh, Constipated, you know, like the Avril Lavigne parody and... Um, even my teacher was talking about him, like in fifth grade, he was talking about, oh, okay, you're kind of like one of the Weird Al guys, right? Yeah, remember that guy who uh, parodied Madonna like a virgin, he did like a surgeon, and Michael Jackson's Beat It, he did Eat It, so, I mean, like, I had, like, no idea who he was, right? And then... All of a sudden, a year later, White and Nerdy comes out, and, like, it's a huge hit. And um, then I'm just, like, I got to, like, find all of the stuff this guy has ever done. And, like, even my parents, like, I, because I went to Walmart, right, when White and Nerdy came out. I had to have the CD, so I bought the Straight out of Linwood CD. And then um, my mom was all, like, Weird Al, he's still around? Oh, my God, that guy's an idiot. You sure you want to buy this? And then I was, like, what? You know who he is? And then he's like, yeah, he was around when I was a kid. And then she would mention, like, Michael Jackson, you know, um, the fat, you know, the bad parody that Weird Al did in the fat suit. And I'm like, oh, my God, there's, like, so much that I need uh, to, like, uh, research about this guy. And this is before I had Internet. So, like, I would just be stuck to, like, uh, what I would see on TV. And then, you know, long story short, um... Like, I would, like, watch, like, um, biographies on him, like, um, when, uh, VH1 aired biography, Weird Al Yankovic, I was, like, super, super stoked, so I learned more about him, I was so fascinated by his story, and then, uh, come to find out that there's, like, a movie that was being made, okay, and Daniel Radcliffe is playing him, out of all people, right, Harry Potter is portraying Weird Al, I'm like, hell yeah, you guys, I need to watch this movie, um, but anyways, you guys, so I always found, like, his, like, musical journey, like, really fascinating to me, you know, starting out just recording songs in the bathroom and then getting them played on the radio and then eventually ending up on MTV. I was like, wow, this is, like, a musician's dream right here, you know? This is, like, really, really cool. So I was, like, super stoked when I found out that there was a biopic made of him biopic so what makes this movie so funny is that it's essentially a parody of biopics and how a lot of biopics will go like with that over-the-top dramatic feel even though a lot of the events may or may have not actually happened now first you guys i'm not gonna lie i was kind of mad watching this movie because i saw like so many like inaccuracies you know being the huge weird al fan i was able to pick that up in an instant right i was like that was not how another one rides the bus came to be okay and then after a while i was putting two and two together i was like okay well you know I don't think Dr. Demento would be living in this fancy mansion, having these lavish parties with all these rock stars. I mean, like Alice Cooper and the guys from Queen were there, you know. I really doubt that that actually happened, right? You know, and at first, you know, I thought that this movie was going to be mostly accurate, you know, with, you know, hints of comedy in there to add the Weird Al feel, but, you know, and a lot of this is true, well, 
I don't know, maybe 20% of this movie is true. But, you know, going in, um, there was an accordion door-to-door -door salesman that went to Al's family's house and offered uh, Al lessons. Like, this is true. And that ended up being Weird Al's first um, instrument. But then, like, you know, when his dad gets all upset and starts beating on the accordion uh, salesman guy, he's like, no, my son will not be playing this filth in my house. I was like, okay, well, you know, they're, they're just adding comedy to it. But then, like the more and more this movie progresses and then like towards like the the second half of this movie it's all bull crap okay it really is none of it is true at all it's just they're just lying at this point like there's even some nods in there uh to like other biopics that um weird al like straightforward just parodies like one that comes to mind is uh the doors like it were like Al just like snaps and he's like drinking whiskey on stage. Okay, well there's a little bit of a spoiler there. I think it's in the trailer. I don't know, but I have to mention this, you guys. And then you even hear like the Doors music playing in the background. His band's all playing like Doors stylistic, like uh, pastiches, right on stage while Weird Al just snaps. And then he's all like, "Oh, you guys asked for it. Now you're gonna get it." And then like something just happens that you totally not expect that just had me rolling on the floor laughing you know and the cops take him out and you know you know for sure that this didn't happen but it's just hilarious hilarious to see because you know exactly what they're spoofing you know jim morrison and um oh yeah yeah um nikki six kickstart my heart you know motley crew the biopic from motley crew is parodied parodied right in the beginning where we think we're gonna lose al you know and then he comes back and then writes like a surgeon okay so i guess those are little minor spoilers but i just had to talk about that and let's talk about daniel radcliffe as weird al uh, i thought he did an outstanding job and actually like pulling off his mannerisms uh especially for someone that isn't a comedic actor like there's even one part in this movie in particular where there's like a feud going on no spoilers there's a feud going on between al and michael jackson i just I found it to be absolutely hilarious, but uh, Daniel really nails it, like, when he's, like, slamming the phone on the hook, like, he's just so upset, he's like, why, how dare you, I hate Michael Jackson, I felt like that was so spot on, you guys, like, Daniel did a great job in nailing Al's quirkiness. And um, let's talk about Evan Rachel Wood. I felt like she was amazing as as Madonna. I have to wonder if Madonna was in on this joke. Or she knows anything about it. If she had to sign off on this movie. Because, you know, technically you don't need to go and get permission if you're doing a parody. But, you know, um, us Al fans, we know how, like, generous Al is. And he'll reach out to every artist that he's parodied. And if they're not cool with it, he doesn't do it. So I have to think Madonna did know about this movie going in. And I wonder what she thought, what her reaction is, uh, if she approves of the final cut or what. But uh, I just, I thought that um, Evan Rachel Wood was excellent as Madonna. And, uh, yeah, like, I just have to wonder, man, and I wish that Coolio was still around, you know, to see this movie. Maybe he did, maybe he saw an advanced cut before this was released, but, uh, it was so, so cool to see how they, um, incorporated Coolio in here, and even Prince... There's like, and I'm going with no spoilers, you guys, but it was so funny how they did Prince in this movie. I was on the floor laughing, you guys. This movie is absolutely hysterical. Uh, the, the humor is dry. It's very, like, slapstick type of humor, you know, but it just works. You know, if you're a fan of Al, you're going to love this movie, is what I have to say. And, um... You know, you're going to appreciate it more if you are an Al fan. You know, if you're an average movie buff, I'll, um, without any spoilers, I'm going to go into the ending here. Um, you might watch the, the movie, okay, if you're an average movie fan, see that ending and go, huh? What the? F <laughs> but, you know, uh, if you are, like, an actual, like, Al fan, I feel like you're really going to appreciate the ending and you're going to be on the floor laughing at, at that ending. Like, for me, I was kind of, like, in the middle of it, you know? As, like, a movie fan, I'm like, that's how you're going to end the movie? Because it just, it ends so abruptly. That's what I will say. Without any spoilers saying what happens, the ending is pure gold. But it ends so abruptly, and I know some people are going to have problems with it if you're just an average movie fan. 
But if you're a Weird Al fan, you're going to love it. So anyways, you guys, uh, that being said, this movie is so stupid, okay? But uh, that's exactly what they were going for, and I feel like they succeeded in that. Dare to be stupid. Anyways, you guys, uh, let me get to my final rating on this movie. Hey you guys, so before I get to my final rating on Weird, the Al Yankovic story, I just want to thank you all so much for watching my video. If you like what you see so far, please hit that like button. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I really do appreciate all the support as always, you guys. Now let's get to my final thoughts on this movie. I have to say, you guys, there are a couple of like unexpected plot twists in this movie that I just, I did not see coming. And, you know, yeah, even for, like, a parody spoof film, I was like, whoa, we're going there, we're going there. Yes, like, this is, like, so awesome. And, um, you know, I feel like the movie was really well-structured. Like, there's not a part in this movie that kind of, like, drags where it's just not as funny. And, like, uh, those of you guys know that this is based off, like, a like a little spoof, like a spoof trailer that happened, I don't know, like 10 years ago from Funny or Die, and they just made it into like a full-length feature film. Uh, it works. Like, not at one point in this movie did I feel like, okay, well, this is just like one short spoof that could have been condensed to 20 minutes. No, this, this works as a full-length film. Uh, the ending does end abruptly, but other than that, though, I, I felt like this movie really, really worked. Well, I will say, if you are a Weird Al fan, this movie is not going to disappoint. Um, I will say that it's uh, very tongue-in-cheek humor. It's very, very silly, but uh, it's Weird Al, you know, and the shoe fits. So this goes hand-in-hand -hand right with his music, and... You know, even at one point, I found that this movie uh, kind of had a similar feel to UHF, even, you know, and, you know, like us Al fans, we really wanted a UHF sequel, and, uh, but I feel like this is just as awesome, you know, so right, right here, I'm happy with this movie, and there's just so much to talk about this movie, um, being an Al fan, and I, I kind of want to go even more in depth, but I'm going to leave it at that because I want you guys to watch the movie and just be as surprised as I was. I'm going to give this movie a solid 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 Coolio rating. Coolio. And I highly recommend that you guys check it out. But yeah, you guys, uh, those are my thoughts on Weird the Al Yankovic story. Did you guys see this movie? What did you think of it? Actually, let me know what you thought of Daniel Radcliffe's portrayal of Weird Al, because I ended up really loving it. And uh, as you guys know, like I'm a huge like autograph collector. It's one of my uh, hobbies on the side. But um, I found a fan mail address for Mr. Daniel Radcliffe, so I'm going to send him some, some goodies here. And let me know in the comment section, do you think he'll sign this? Just, you know, as a gag... I. I really want to see if he would actually sign this. So I've seen like little pictures of like Weird Al signing pictures as Daniel Radcliffe. I wonder if he will sign as, you know, Weird Al. We will see. We will soon find out, you know, to be continued. But anyways, you guys, just thank you again for watching my video. Kenneth Ramon, signing off. Yeah.